today, friends. How was that? Was that good? Is anybody convinced? Absolutely not. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Steve. I know, I was hoping that maybe I would get you with that um, really poor attempt at James's accent. Uh, but maybe I just get an A for effort. So, sorry about that. Anyway, how would we even say it here in, in, in California? Good day, friends. That sounds ridiculous. Anyway, everybody, it's me, Steve. I am here doing the voiceover for James's video on, uh, on today. <laughs> oh man, guys, I'm a little nervous, not gonna lie. Um, but I am super excited to be here and I hear the cat rustling around, so um, I apologize for that. They, you know, James would always say that anytime he would sit down to do a voiceover, the cats tend to go crazy. And I was like, yeah, whatever, you're just kind of complaining. And he's legitimately, totally correct. He walked out, I pressed record, and Bianca started scurrying. Now, mind you, Bianca literally just sleeps all day long, but I think she's upset because I'm sitting in the chair that she likes to hang out in, so um, I guess I took her throne. So from one queen to the next, ha ha ha. Okay, anyway, moving on. Um, really, I am so excited to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you guys for um, kind of submitting your questions and, and the Berkmates group page. It was so fun to see uh, kind of what you guys, how you guys responded and the questions that you guys had. Uh, I would like to attempt to see, what, you know, to say this is what we're doing here. You know, James put some black paint down and now he got a white pencil. Uh, and uh, yeah, we can tell based especially on the Creativation video that I don't really know too much about what's happening. I just, you know, I'm supporting from the side and encouraging him. You know, I mean, because for instance, I called the HP Sprocket a Sprock. I'll never live that down. James literally gives me <laughs> he just he messes with me every single day about it. He just calls me out on it. Anyway, okay, so I figured, you know, to pass some of the time, we would, you know, do a little Q&A, and uh, I'm happy to kind of give you my opinion on some of these questions that you guys submitted, which I think there's some really exciting ones. Uh, I think I'm going to try to get through all of them as best as I can, and uh, in the meantime, you know, you guys can watch James uh, put white on this thing. Um, I'm just, I cannot wait to see what it turns into. Obviously, girl with a moon and stars. That's what we'll call it. Girl with moon and stars. Which, don't get me wrong, I legitimately love the moon. I think the moon is one of the most beautiful creations. I believe that God was just so intentional with the moon. I think it's so pretty. It's so ethereal. There's so much magic attached to it. And it's, I don't know, I love it. I love it. Like, for instance, I love the song Claire de Lune by WC, and I think it just captures the magic of night and romance and wonder. Anyway, okay, that's my opinion. Moving on, excuse me. <clears throat> All right, let's get to these questions. First question, uh, and I've left names out for anonymity. Is that how you say it? Anonymity, Amini Amini whatever, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> First question, if you could do anything, go anywhere, what would your perfect day be? You know, that's tough. I will be really honest and say that a lot of my life has existed with expectation and building, uh, creating a moment. I think that's what you get kind of being an actor is that you're always, um, you're, you're, you're building a moment, you're creating uh, kind of a false narrative a little bit. And so, and especially with like social media and Instagram, you see like, you know, the Instagram perfect day, you know, with with the coffee and then you go out on a fun date and do all that stuff and it's just kind of, it's not really soaked in any level of authenticity. It's all, you know, just doing it for the gram. Excuse me, so I don't know, like real talk, a perfect day would just be, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I love going to Disneyland, believe it or not, even though I work there. But I have found that the most, the more perfect the days are, are the days that happen with zero expectation. When I just let the moment happen, I just kind of am open to whatever the experience is, whatever doors God opens up, and just kind of going, living in that moment. I mean, I remember there are so much, so many days when I used to live up in, in Hollywood where you'd just, hey, let's go do this, and then you go do that, and then it would turn into that, and turn into that, and then, you know, before you know it, you've had a whole day out, and you've been hanging out with a bunch of friends, and it's good times. And I, you know, I enjoy doing that too, you know, it's like, hey, let's go down to the beach, all right, so you start at the beach, and hey, let's go get lunch, and lunch turns into a couple drinks, which turns into, you know, happy hour, and then, hey, let's go, let's go over here, let's go to Disneyland, let's go to the park, and you just, <clears throat> excuse me, just bounce around 
Orange County and it's so much fun. You just are open to the experience. Those are kind of some of my more fun days. And I think that would be kind of a perfect day living with no expectation. What do you enjoy when you visit Australia with James? What do you love most for, what do you look, what do you most look forward to when coming down under? Uh, real talk, I've only been to Australia once, um, but I, I really enjoyed my time there. I think Australia is such a cool country. I do feel like it's a little bit stuck in a time warp uh, based on, um, you know, America or California for that matter. But what I, you know, when I get to go back, I think, you know, my, my in-laws are, are pretty fantastic people and James's family is so heavy on family dynamic and they love it and they just take so much time for that. And it's super important to James and I love that um, about my, my extended family. So I just look forward to hanging out with them, going out to, you know, going out for a drive, going to get some food and actually real talk. Um, I love um, drinking diamond nights with my mother-in-law. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, if you could be a zookeeper for the day, which animal would you want to look after? Easy. Lions. I love cats. I love cats. I think lions are some of the most majestic and lazy animals. And I cannot wait to get to heaven and just hang out and like take a nap on a lion. I don't know why. I just love it. And interesting because James is a Leo. See how that, see how God works? Amazing. I love it. Um, and I think that's why we have, you know, we love, I love cats. James loves cats. We have two cats and I really want a third just to make it off balance, which is crazy because I'm a Libra and I like things to be very balanced and fair and easy. But I feel like having a third cat would kind of um, shift the dynamic here between Bianca and Oliver. <laughs> what do you love most about James? Uh, there's so many things, but easy. I love I love his creativity. I love how he sees the world. I love how he views um, imagination and magic. And he is super unapologetic. Uh, one of the first things that made me fall in love with him was that he used to carry a Cabbage Patch Kid with him wherever he went. He would take it with him on every contract. And I thought, this is a grown man who goes on contracts, dances professionally around the world, and takes a Cabbage Patch Kid with him. <laughs> But he just doesn't care and that's so much part of it that's so much a part of his charm and i love that so that's what i love uh one of the things i love most about james um and you know obviously his creativity and his heart what my old what would be your ultimate vacation my ultimate vacation oh that's tough i love that um i think this kind of coincides with the next uh the next question is that i love italy and for me i would legitimately just love to live and have have the means to live in Italy for three months out of the year and then live in Japan for three months out of the year and then live in America for three months out of the year and then the other three months live in Australia. I think that would be so cool and so great and uh, I feel like that's the dream. But as far as an ultimate vacation, I just, I don't know, I would love to just go live or just go hang out in, you know, Chicaterra and exist throughout all of Italy. I love Italian people. I love the culture in that country. You know, here in America, excuse me, <clears throat> here in America, we, uh, we kind of, um, have this idea of we, we live to work, you know, so much is about working and it's about getting things done and I have to get it done. And, you know, you, a lot of value is placed in that. And I'm not saying don't work, but the Italians have kind of another, they're the opposite. They, they just work to live, you know, I'm going to work today. I'm going to go work at my cafe. I'm going to go do this, but I'm also going to enjoy life. I'm going to indulge in la dolce vita, you know, the sweet life and to appreciate all of the beauty and the majesty that life has to offer. And I think that's really, really cool. So I love that. And, um, I also love, um, Capri. Um, fun fact, Capri is where Limoncello was created because they have so many lemons on that little Island. And my last name means lemon. So there you have it. As they say in my big fat Greek wedding, there you go. <laughs> I love that movie as well um, because my dad's side of the family is Greek. Little known fact, the more you know, there's the star. See how the stars are in the painting. It's all attached. Um, does James keep his art stash in order? Or is he a hoarder? Well, a little bit of both. James is a hoarder, but I will say this, his stash is pretty conservative. He does a good job of keeping things relatively in order and low key. He's not really afraid to throw, to throw things away, uh, but he keeps it pretty, pretty. I mean, overall, his collection is, is relatively conservative. Um, he has a couple of carts full of art supplies and everything's kind of in there, his markers, his paints, um, his watercolor palettes and all that stuff. I think you'd be actually surprised at um, 
at the studio that he creates in. Uh, we have an extra bedroom and it's, it's our office and he just kind of, um, you know, creates in there and he's really good about utilizing the space. So it's not insane. He does have like, or he did for a long time have a bag that was full of like scraps that he would put into his, um, into his journals and stuff. Uh, but he's not, you know, he'll throw things away. He's, he doesn't keep too much. He keeps a lot of the important things or something that he really, really likes that he knows he, he will use. He keeps that around. Uh, regarding photography, my expertise, right? Wow, thank you. Uh, so what is a good versatile lens for a beginner that doesn't require, <laughs> that doesn't require me selling a kidney? I love the 50 millimeter, the one that blurs the background. Okay, um, here's the real talk. I would say photography, um, why thank you, is not really my expertise. It's just kind of an extended hobby that has just happened. And I'm really thankful for it and I love it. And it's a way for me to express my creative self. Uh, what I would recommend is definitely the 50 millimeter. There is, um, there's a, there's one that we call the nifty 50 that I think is about a hundred bucks and it's a fixed lens. So fixed lens means that it doesn't zoom. So yes, you do have to move around and go up to your subject and what you're shooting. If you want a zoom, I would say the 2470, but that's going to, um, be a little bit more on the pricey side but i would always recommend the 50 millimeter i shoot that i shoot with the 50 mil, millimeter lens primarily i have the 50 millimeter 1.2 uh, on a canon and that's my go-to lens 100 percent so i hope that helps if you're wanting to get into pictures into taking pictures into photography and i always say everyone can take pictures that's my so that's my recommendation Oh, there's so many questions and I don't have too much time yet. Okay, left. Uh, what was your first reaction when James mentioned trying to start a business? Well, um, he will never say this, but I encouraged him to start the Etsy shop. He's going to hate me for saying that. It's okay. We, I, well, I mean, I guess maybe he had came up with the idea too, but I was trying to encourage him in like saying, hey, your art is incredible. You're so talented. God has absolutely blessed you with this gift. Have you thought about doing an Etsy shop? I think people would love your art. And if you go back and you see some of his original stuff, his original Disney things, we were, we like, I swore that, oh, that's going to get picked up. People love that. Everybody's going to, they're going to just eat that up. And I think he maybe sold like four prints and they're the Golden Girls. So, you know, you got to start somewhere. So I'm super duper proud of him. And I was so thankful that he just kind of listened to that calling and just went for it. Um, have you ever thought of turning any of his art pieces into photo shoots? Like she left off the page, but one that you want to do for your own enjoyment and exploration. Yes. I love James's brush, uh, the brush stroke Dior women, the, with the calligraphy ink. I think those are some of his most beautiful pieces. They are so simple and they're so elegant. And I would love to create, just recreate like that Dior fashion. Um, I think that would be so much fun. I want to know if you'll go to New York to see Moulin Rouge on Broadway. It opens this summer. I saw Strictly Ballroom, the musical in London's West End last summer. It was amazing. Wish it were touring. Moulin Rouge is definitely on my wish list. Wish list. Love me some Baz. I love Baz Luhrmann too. Yes, Baz Luhrmann is my absolute all-time favorite movie film director in the world. He also directed La Boheme, uh, which is an opera. He directed that in Australia first and then on Broadway, which was incredible. Um, yes. You know, James and I were actually talking about it last week. Like, how are we going to go see it? So it's in the works. You know, we're praying about it. We're hoping that, you know, there will be provision for it and uh, that we can get out there to to go see that. We loved it. We saw it in Boston, the out-of-town tryout. Our friend Jen is in the show. It's brilliant. It's incredible. And we would, I would love to go see it. I almost feel like I have to. And if I could, I mean, I, I, I love Strictly Ballroom. Strictly Ballroom was my introduction to Baz Luhrmann. If you have not seen Strictly Ballroom, check it out. It's so much fun. It's campy. It's great. It's brilliant. I love it. Chubby bunny tips. Oh, man. Real talk, I used to cheat all the time because I just wanted to win. So <laughs> I would, I would, you know, like take the marshmallows and uh, kind of flatten them out, put them in the back of my mouth, and your glands are back there. And so the, the saliva would kind of help melt them down, and I would, you know, I would just very, um, I'd be very secretive about how I was swallowing it so I could make it, and I just kept my cheeks puffed out, and then I would win. <laughs> uh, a couple more questions. Uh, Disney, do you work a nine to five there, and what are you most proud of accomplishing your time there? It's kind of hard to say. I don't really work a nine to five, but I do, my schedule is kind of um, a day, it's considered a day job, I guess, if you will, as an actor. Um, and I, 
I love it. Um, I do a multiple, I do a variety of shows. I've done a variety of shows there, but I think my thing that I'm, the show that I'm the most proud of is Coco, a musical celebration of Coco. That has been, and James just entered in. I could hear that squeak. Um, a, a musical celebration of, my Co of Co excuse me, a musical celebration of Coco is legitimately just a God-given gift. And the experience was wonderful and life-changing. And if you ever get a chance to come down to Disney California Adventure in the fall, and you get a chance to see the show, that's where I will be, and I love it. And I would love to see you guys there. Story of how we met and how we got together. Very quickly, um, we met working on contract at Tokyo Disneyland. James was dancing in a show and I was singing. We Our contracts crossed over. And uh, I went up to him one, one night. We all went out with a group of friends and I kind of cornered him and asked him a couple questions. And that's where the friendship began. And the rest is kind of history. You know, we maintained a friendship and we tried to date a little bit and it didn't work out. And then God kind of separated our lives and then God brought our lives back together. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's kind of the very bare bones of how we met was performing on contract. Last question. I lost my creative spark. Uh, Steve, any advice on how do I rekindle my love for creating art again? Well, first of all, I'm so sorry to hear that. Secondly, I think it's an easy solution. Creating art is like building muscle. So if you go to the gym and you're wanting to lose weight and you want to build muscle, it takes active practice every single day or multiple times a week. And the same thing with art. And you know, like honestly, this morning I woke up and I didn't want to go to the gym. I didn't feel like it, I hated it. But halfway through my workout, I was fine. Once I was there, it was great. And then when I was done, I felt so good. It's the same type of thing. Even if you not don't feel like it, I say, Grab a piece of paper, grab a marker, grab a pen, grab a pencil, and just doodle. Draw an eye. Draw a face. Make some shapes. Take some watercolor and just put it down, even if it's for six minutes a day. Less than. Even if you do it for three minutes. And set a timer, do it for three minutes, and when three minutes is up, you'll see, oh, I can do this for six minutes. And six minutes turns into 12 minutes, and 12 minutes turns into 18 minutes. And before you know it, you're sitting there for an hour or so, and you're just drawing. And the thing is, I guess the best, my best advice would be just to not overthink it, just to make it happen. And I'm preaching to the choir here because I overthink my photo shoots and I think, oh, I don't like that. It's not my favorite thing, but just doing it, I know builds a skill and helps me learn more and I'm refining my skills and it's like building muscles. And it just, at the end, I'm happier that I did it. Even if it's not my most favorite thing, I'm really proud of myself for putting, for just kind of making the choice and uh, dedicating myself to that creative breakthrough. Well, that's it. Thank you guys so much for all of your questions. I had so much fun. Um, if you have any other questions, I don't know, shoot me uh, a direct message, uh, Steve Lamonis Photography on Instagram. And uh, thank you guys all for your support, for your support for James and for our life over here. Um, we really appreciate each and every one of you and you guys truly are a blessing to us. Um, so until next time, Thank you guys so much. Have a great weekend. Have a great week. We love you. We'll see you later. Bye.